Okay, so now, now that we've kind of learned more about the heart, part two, circulation, arteries, and veins. Let's get into that. Can you tell I like this? Oh, I really do. I learned this at a young age, and, uh, and it stuck with me. Okay, so this this scary guy right here, not Boyd, but this picture, I noticed Boyd popped up back onto the screen. <laughs> that could be Boyd, though. He has no hair. Um, the basic structure of the circulatory system. This picture I found, and I wanted to show you because look how vascular your body is. This, this is just like a basic look, you know. And that's why, you know, if someone cuts you, you bleed because it, there's all that vascular uh, network uh, right there. It's amazing, isn't it? So I have put on here, you know, we are very vascular people. And if you didn't know, this was a neat fact. If all the vessels of this network in your body were laid end to end, they would extend for about 60,000 miles, more than 96,500 uh, kilometers which is far enough to circle the planet Earth more than twice. Can you imagine that? I mean, your body, the, those vessels laid out like, like a rope could circle the Earth more than twice. That's how vascular, that's how amazing your vascular system is. Okay, uh, some more information about uh, that. 20 major arteries make up a path through your tissues where they branch into smaller vessels called arterioles. Now, uh, arterioles, you need to know what those are. The arterioles further branch into capillaries. You need to know what capillaries are. The true deliverers of oxygen and nutrients to your cells. So, the exchange of oxygen and the waste coming out of the blood happens on the capillary level. So you have artery, arterial, capillary, venules, veins, heart, you know, uh, lungs, and it goes all, it makes that path again and again. Now, most capillaries are thinner than a hair, if you can imagine that. In fact, Many are so tiny, only one blood cell can move through them at a time. And you can't see a blood cell with a human eye. Fascinating. I think it's fascinating. Once the capillaries deliver the oxygen and the nutrients and pick up the carbon dioxide, which we're going to expel through our lungs and other waste and stuff, um, they move the blood back through the wider vessels called the venules. Okay, and then the venules go into the veins, and the veins uh, deliver the uh, uh, deoxygenated blood up through the vena cava. You got the, the superior and inferior vena cava back into the atrium, down into the ventricles, then up whoosh through those um, pulmonary artery or uh, pul yeah pulmonary arteries that because it's deoxygenated, and it goes into the lungs, and then it goes back out, you know, picks up that good oxygen and whoosh back into the heart through the pulmonary veins. Okay? So, here, this is really small, and I don't know, I was going to try to make this bigger, guys, but I don't know if I can. I'm going to try here. Um, there are, there are so many fantastic, um, Images you can go into Google Google Images and stuff uh, and look at the uh, the veins and the arteries. Now, I don't want to say that you have to have these memorized, but if you know things like the bones, chances are, uh, and other parts of the body and organs, chances are you're going to be able to place them because the names are similar. So as we go through some of these, see if they don't help you by knowing where certain bones are. Um, I do tell people you need to know the bones. If you're going to be a good coder and you don't want to spend all this time looking stuff up constantly, memorize the bones and don't use the bones uh, with the layman's terms like shoulder blade. Make sure you know scapula and that your ribs are costal bones, things like that. Okay, so uh, occipital, again. Occipital 
if you know that area. Uh, then let's go down one side. We're not going to read all of these, but I want to highlight some. We've got your carotid arteries. Those carotid arteries, remember they go up and through your neck, okay? And they do those studies to, to see if uh, you've got uh, blockage there. And if you've got blockage there, you're, you're uh, needing to go and have some work done because you could have a stroke. Uh, so uh, carotid, we know is in the neck. Then we have subclavian artery. This is a really important artery and one that, um, you know, your collarbone is called your clavicle and therefore you've got a subclavian under the clavicle is what that means, major artery that runs here. And a lot of times when they want to um, get uh, a lot of IVs, bags, uh, fluids and stuff into you at once, they'll do a cut down straight under that collarbone into that uh, uh, subclavian artery and they'll literally have IV, it has all these little things like that and they'll, they're not this big of course, they're you know about this big, about a hair thing. And, um, and they'll push those in there and only have like five IV leads that they can hang up and give you tons of stuff at once. So that is subclavian or under the clavicle. Then, you know, we've got our artery and our pulmonary veins, all that stuff we just talked about. Now, that aorta, it also runs all the way down through the thoracic area and then it branches off. So this is an abdominal aorta because this is the abdomen. This celiac uh, ends up going into like uh, your uh, working with your liver and stuff like that. Splenic, of course, that goes to the spleen. Renal goes to the kidneys. Um, uh, let's see, uh, radial. Now, remember, you got your ulna and your radial uh, radius and your arms. The radius runs off to the thumb. And remember, if you're going to take somebody's radial pulse, you take it right here off the thumb, okay? And that's the radial art. That's what you're feeling is that radial um, uh, pulse. Then palmer is in the hand because we know palmer. Digital arteries because these are your digits when you're talking to bones and stuff. Okay, let's go over to the other side. Facial arteries, yeah. Uh, right, common, uh, carotid, just left and right, you know. It's uh, bilateral. Then this brachiocephalic is this one right here. So that, that subclavian turns into the brachiocephalic. And then you've got thoracic, which is for the chest, right coronary over in the heart. Now this axillary, you know, if somebody's going to take your temperature and they say, well, let's take your axillary temperature, they're going to do it under the arm right there. Axillary is what that means. And if you don't know, if you take a temperature under the arm, you subtract one point. Uh, let's see, brachial, uh, right here in the arm, that's the brachial artery. On little babies, when you want to check their pulse, you don't check it in the lower arm, you take the brachial pulse. Uh, let's see, uh, abdominal aorta. The common iliac, remember I talked about the iliac crest of the pelvis and uh, internal iliac. Uh, external iliac. Now, this vein right here, very important, you'll hear a lot about it, the femoral uh, artery. Deep femoral, uh, deep medial sir, uh, circumflux, this little whoop, this little loop right here. But this is where, if they're going to do some work on the heart, see how big this is, this pathway is? A lot of times they'll go in right here in this femoral artery and they'll run that wire in that little camera all the way up through the aorta and down into the heart. It's amazing what they can do. Pretty cool. But they'll go from here because this is bigger vessels if you haven't noticed. Uh, let's see, of course that's the same name for your uh, uh, kneecap, patella. Uh, and then you've got your tibia and fibia and everything. Now this dorsal this dorsal uh, uh, pedis is what they're doing. Remember, they if you've ever seen them touch the top of somebody's foot, want to see they have good dorsal pulses and, and the circulation is getting down to the legs. If you've had any trauma or they're worried about your heart uh, uh, or anything, they want to make sure the circum circulation is getting down to the dorsal pulses. Now, do you have to have these memorized? Well, you can see how the terminology, if you know the bones, uh, then uh, you probably can get by 
with knowing a lot of these. So I wouldn't say you have to have them memorized. You probably already know them and you didn't even know it. But be very familiar with them because a lot of diagnoses and locations are fed off those names. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.